good luck, Josh. Thanks a lot, Bert. Say hello to Walter Cronkite for us. I'll do that. Well, so long. Bye so long. Bye. Walter Cronkite. What a break. From Ted Baxter to Walter Cronkite. <laughs> Makes you believe there is a life after death, doesn't it? <laughs> Hi, guys. What's up? Oh, we're just giving a little going away party for Josh. Oh, yes. Going out to write for good old Cronky. <laughs> anyway, I just hope Josh remembers he's no different than the rest of us. I mean, he takes his pants off one leg at a time, just like me. The only difference is you try to get yours off over your head. <laughs> the only family I have, you know. Losing one of my news writers is like losing my own son. Josh, uh, your little lug, I'm gonna miss you. I'm not Josh. <laughs> Of course you're not. Uh, you're, uh, you're, uh... Pete. No, no, that's not it. Uh... <laughs> no, no, I'll think, I'll think of it. Hi, everybody. Hey, Wes, how are you? Good to see you. Good to see you. How have you been? Hi. Hi, Mary. Gee, I haven't seen you since you stopped writing for Chuckles. Yeah, well, I had to quit. It wasn't the writing so much, but when Chuckles made me zip Esther Duck into her feather suit, you know, it just wasn't dignified. Oh, come on, you contributed a lot of very clever things to that show. Like what? Well, you created the character of Maharishi Marshmallow. Maharishi Marshmallow? Isn't that the one that puts the gooey stuff all over his face, wears a turban, and has that unnatural fear of cookouts? Yeah. <laughs> well, I was proud of him. That's when I knew I had to quit. So, what have you been doing? Oh, just freelance writing. Last month, I wrote a barbecue apron. Maybe you saw it right in the front. It said, if you like it rare, you're too late. <laughs> hey, it's good to see you again. Yeah, it's good to see you. Boy, I really missed you. All. Oh. And we all missed you, too. Mary, I'm sorry I didn't call for a couple of months, but there was a good reason. Oh, no, listen, Wes, that's Look, okay. maybe I should leave you two alone. Huh? Oh, that's all right, Mary. I can say this in front of you. I was down, you know, feeling really down. <laughs> and when I'm down like that, I just don't feel right about going out with... A girl like you, you know, when I'm down, I have to go out with down women, you know, low, really low women, you know, the kind I'm talking about. Yeah, I guess I do. Well, not that low. <laughs> anyway, now with this job opening up and all. What job? That's what I'm here for, to see Lou about taking Josh McBride's place. Oh, Wes, that's great. I'll go put a good word in for you. Hey, uh, Mary, I don't want you to put in a good word for me. Uh, I want you to beg for me. <laughs> but, Mia, why would Lou hire a clown writer for Ted? All obvious jokes aside. <laughs> I really think that Wes is going to be just fine. Come on, Mayor. Uh, you can't like the idea of working alongside a guy you used to date. Okay, and you want to know why? It makes me feel guilty. Guilty? Why? He never had anything really serious going. No, I didn't, but he did. And I just feel guilty knowing that he likes me more than I like him, you know? And it's going to be that way every day, him liking me more than I like him. And that's the thing, I feel so guilty when I'm the one who feels less. Mm, me too. It's terrible. Although it sure beats being the other one. <laughs> you know, Mary, I once worked with a guy that I had previously dated. A disaster. I mean, I swore, never again. Y you, both of us got driven crazy. I mean, how would you like somebody going through your mail, listening in on your phone calls? I'd hate it. So did he. Hi, Mary. Wes, hi. Hi, Rhoda. Well, hi, Wes. Congratulations. I heard you got the job. Thanks. Are well, you ready to go? Go where? To work. I thought we'd drive to work together. Oh, well, sure, that would be fun for today. Well, we can do it every day. I don't mind. Just a few miles out of my way. Oh, well, I don't, I don't think uh, we'd want to do it every day. Why, how come? How come? Well, um, because like, like today at, l at my lunch hour, I was going to use my car. I was, uh, I was going to use it to... Uh... Well, you can use mine for that. And then after work, I thought I'd do a little shopping, you know, probably spend hours looking for dresses. Oh, I'll take you shopping. I'm watching you try on clothes. I can't think of a better evening than that. <laughs> uh, Mary, wait, uh, not so fast there. Remember, you promised me to pick me up after you finish your shopping because I have to bring home that uh, giant 40-pound cactus tonight? <laughs> this, this is true, and Wes, you only have the two seats in your car, so... You're not just making all this up so you won't have to drive to work with me, are you? Oh, no, no, Wes, no. Well, uh... 
I'll tell you, I'll put the top down and then put the back seat down and uh, we'll wedge the cactus in there and Rhoda can sit on your lap. You ready? Well, then I'll see you tonight. One question, where am I gonna find a 40 pound cactus? <laughs> Hey, Mayor, can you proof this for me, please? Hey, let me give that to Mayor. Oh, thanks. There you are, Mayor. <laughs> Thank you. Did you want me to prove something for you, Wes? No, no, I just thought I'd stretch the old legs and say hi. <laughs> oh, I'll let you get back to work. You thought about where you'd like to have lunch today? Oh, no, I hadn't. There was this great Chinese place down the street, I thought. Oh, uh, good, that sounds fine. Yeah. I gotta finish this. No, you're in the middle of it. Of course, if you like Italian food, there's a brand new, on the other hand, a great new Greek place is, so I, whatever, what, what do you think? Whatever you want. Well, I'll decide. Suppose I just narrow it down to three. Uh, say, Wes, you know, it might be a lot easier if you and I trade desks. <laughs> oh, don't be silly, Murray. I mean, after all, that's your desk. You've been there for a long time. I'm sure you wouldn't want to give it up, <laughs> would you? I'm, sorry. I'm talking too much. Is this on? So happy about the new job and all. Oh, uh, Wes, I'm glad you're here. Uh, I'd like to give you one or two little hints, make it easier for you to write for me. Sure. Uh, first. <clears throat> In the field of foreign news, try to avoid countries and politicians whose names are impossible to pronounce. <laughs> Last night, some joker gave me a story about Ethiopia. I had to pronounce that guy's name, you know, the guy that's king of it or something? Haile Selassie? Yeah, yeah, that's the guy. Well, in the future, try to avoid him. As a matter of fact, just avoid Ethiopia. Nobody cares about it anyway. <laughs> Well, Murray, I've gone over this three times. I can't find any mistake. Oh, that's okay. Ted'll find us. Oh, Wes. Wes, I heard you were here. I gotta talk to you. Oh, hi, Chuck. Murray, you know Chuckles the Clown. Oh, yeah. Hi, Chuck. Look, Wes, Wes. Look, I was in the middle of rehearsal, and suddenly I realized I got big problems. Look at this. My idiot writers have got me swallowed up by Moby Pickle. You know, he's the biggest gherkin in the world. Right? Two pages <laughs> later. Two pages later, I escape. There's no gazinta, there's no development, there's no big jokes, there's no motivation. No clowns in the newsroom. <laughs> Sorry, Lou. This is important, Grant. Will you look at this? They got me, Esther Duck, and the Maharishi Marshmallow in this pickle. My heart goes out to you. <laughs> What's up? You know, Chuckles is caught in this giant pickle and doesn't know how to get out. Oh, yeah, I knew about that. <laughs> come on, come on, Wesley. How do I get out? Huh? What if the pickle just says to them, I'm sick of this. You got 10 seconds to get out of here. Now, the pickle would never say that. <laughs> no, I gotta get back to work, Chuck. No, Wes, Wes, you're not gonna leave me in there. All right, uh, do you have your little lunch bucket with you? Oh, yeah, I, I never go anywhere without that. Yeah, all right, well, you reach in and pull out a, like a pastrami sandwich and say, you know what would go good with this? A pickle. And then that, that gives you the idea. What idea? Well, you eat your way out. I, I eat my way out. You know, I think it'll work. Oh, it's got to work. Wait a second. <laughs> You're trying to tell me that three people can eat that much pickle monster? Look, it's a fantasy. Uh -huh. You're telling me that's why it's not real. <laughs> but you want to know what's real? Ratings are real. Did you get a good look at last month's ratings? Chuckles the Clown, 17. Uh, the 6 o'clock news, 6. Uh, that's no fantasy. <laughs> Wait a minute, clown. Who are you calling a clown? <laughs> well, if the shoe fits. <laughs> you think you're so hot? Everybody here knows that Esther Duck's been carrying you for the last five years. You know what she was doing when I found her? Nothing. You know what Murray was doing when I found him? He was a, a wino on Skid Row begging for quarters. <laughs> Everybody knows you're the only guy on your show that struck out with Princess Potato. You go too far, Baxter. <laughs> Boy, talk about Mr. Sensitive. <laughs> well, I'm going to lunch. Say, Wes, uh, can you loan me a quarter for a bottle of Muscatel? <laughs> mm. Newsroom. No, sorry, Mary isn't here right now. Who shall I say is calling? Jim? 
Well, may, may I ask what this is in reference to? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I happen to know she has a lunch date for today. That's right, yeah. Yeah, well, I'll tell her. Yeah. Who's that? Uh, a guy named Jim. I had a lunch date with him. Well, that's right. I told him you already had a date with me. <laughs> you know, Wes, I think we ought to have a little talk. What about? Well, Wes, you and I are going to be working together very closely, you know. I mean, I'm going to get personal phone calls. You'll get personal phone calls. No, I, I, I don't take personal phone calls in the office, Mary. Uh-huh. Well, <laughs> what I'm trying to say, Wes, is that because we are working... I understand. So... I understand, Mary. Now, you you call this guy Jim back and tell him you, you'll have lunch with him. Go ahead. Tell him you'll have lunch with him today. Okay. You and I will have dinner tonight. <laughs> Oh, Mayor, uh, Wes asked me to tell you not to go. He wants to see you first. He's down with Chuckles. Seems that Chuckles is trapped in this giant cookie jar and Wes is trying to figure a way out. Boy, I wish I could figure a way out. Oh, that uh, thing with Wes is getting complicated, huh? Oh, Murray, it's just so mixed up. I mean, I'm really glad that he's working here, you know? But the last couple of weeks, he's been driving me right up the walls. Well, maybe you ought to try talking to him about it. I can't. Every time I do, he gets this hurt, sad look in his eyes, like when Bambi lost his mother. Oh, come on. You've always had trouble with that. You can't be angry with anybody. You're afraid to show anybody that you have any negative feelings about them. You're a pushover, Mary, because people know you'll never be angry with them. I do so get angry. Oh, come on. Let's just forget it. You got some gum? Yeah, I have gum, Murray. I got two pieces of gum, and I want them both. And I'm not afraid to tell you that I am not giving you any because I am sick and tired of you always bumming gum from me, Murray. Never even thinking to go out and buy yourself a package for your own self because you're always so sure that you're going to get mine. Well, this time you are wrong, Murray. Yes, I have gum. It is sugarless cherry. Yes, Murray, sugarless cherry, your very favorite, most beloved kind. And I am not afraid to tell you that you are not getting any. <laughs> Thanks. Ah, burning the old seven o'clock oil, huh? I'm just waiting for Wes. Yeah, me too. You want to see me about something? All right. Wes, Hi. be right with you. All right. Mary, I'll give me a couple of minutes and we'll go out and celebrate. Celebrate? Yeah, well, I got this idea. I'm about to pitch to Lou, and if he buys it, well, we'll celebrate. Maybe I ought to try it out on you first. Now, nah, if you don't like it, it'll ruin my confidence while I go in there. Wes, maybe I'll like it. Well, I'd sure like to try it out on somebody. Well? Okay, let me bounce it off you. But don't react. I mean, don't react in any way. I mean, don't, don't be like positive or negative. It's just, you know, just like that. Okay. That way, if you don't like it, then I won't know that I'll be fine when I go in there. I won't lose my confidence. All right. All right. Here's the idea. Don't react. My idea is to do the new show right from here. You know, informal, everybody going about their job just like they do every day. You know, like, for example, if a, if a bulletin comes in, someone just takes it over and gives it to Ted, and he reads it on the air. Just informal, like we do every day like that, and, and that's my idea. And you hate it. I can tell by the look on your face, you hate it, you think it's a terrible idea, I can tell by the look on your face. What look on my face, Wes? There was no look on my face. You said not to have a look on my face, and there was none. Yeah, but if you really liked it, you'd, you'd have had a look on your face. Wes, I did like it. You didn't love it. Hey, yes, I love it. Not a lot. Wes, you want to come in now? You know, I had this idea, but you might as well forget it. Mary hates it. You should have seen the look on her face. <laughs> I deserved it, if I may say so myself. You may say so yourself. <laughs> oh, boy. They say happiness doesn't last. Well, I've been happy for three hours and 45 minutes ever since Lou said he liked my idea. I mean, he actually liked it. I told you he would. I just can't believe we're going to do it. Wes, I just wish you would realize your own terrificness. <laughs> I can't find my key. Oh, well, forget your key. I want to talk to you. I feel so terrific, so confident now that, well, there's something I want to ask you. Oh, Wes, why look for ways to 
Bring yourself down. I mean, you know, why bring up another subject? Why don't you just enjoy the great thing that happened to you today, you know, instead of asking me some dumb question? Oh, that question. <laughs> you think I'm going to ask that question, don't you? Well, I'm not going to ask you that question. My question is a completely different question entirely. My question is, will you marry me? <laughs> That's your question, too, wasn't it? Oh, Wes. You don't want to marry me, you don't have to marry me. It won't be the first time someone didn't marry me, it won't be the last. Boy, good old Wes Callis, everybody just wiped their feet on it. Oh, Wes, why do you always do this? I, you got out of your way to make yourself miserable. I don't think you even want to marry me anyway. I think you just asked me that so I would say no so that you could feel miserable. No psychology, I don't want to use psychology. It's not. Well, here I am home again after a hard day's work. <laughs> and here are those stairs again. Well, I think I better just start up the stairs. <laughs> yes, I am now climbing up the stairs. <laughs> well, hi, Wes. What a surprise. Hi, you Mary. Oh, what a beautiful day today, huh? I am reading the most spellbinding book, and I would love to stay here and chat with you two, but I have to go right upstairs and finish it. Well, are you through psychoanalyzing me, or can I go now? No, Wes, I think you should stay so that we can say whatever it is we have to say to each other. I am now coming down the stairs again. You look like a fool, I left my groceries in the car. I am now coming down the stairs. <laughs> Wes, will you please come inside so that we can talk? No, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna get out of here. Hope I lose my job so I never have to see you again. You want to know something? You're the worst person I ever proposed to. I am not discussing this. I am simply inserting my key into the lock and saying good night, Rhoda. Good night, Rhoda. Do you mind if I rush down the street and get him on the rebound? <laughs> kitty, kitty. <laughs> Out of my chair, Murph. Uh, Ted, don't put your gum under the desk and don't play with the typewriter keys. <laughs> I like it. It's gonna have the feel of a newsroom. Yeah, wasn't it a terrific idea Wes had? Mm. Hey, where is that son of a gun anyway, Mayor? I don't know, I haven't seen him all day. All right, remember to just relax and be natural. Just pretend we're not even here, right? Right. All right. Hi, everybody. Hi, Wes. Hi, Mary. <laughs> He's bombed. Hey, Wes, that was a terrific idea you had. It's great for my image. Best thing that could happen to me. It ain't gonna work. What? Nothing in my life works. Why should this work? It isn't gonna work. No, no, why is it going to work? <laughs> Don't worry, Ted. Don't worry. It's gonna work. It's gonna work. Why is it gonna work? <laughs> Ask her, she thinks she knows everything. Well, it's going to work. It's a great idea. Yeah, yeah. Come on, Wes. Come on. Just sit right down here and relax. Fat lot you know, Mary. <laughs> All right, Ted, we'll open on a shot of you working on story. Then you'll swing around and look right into the camera. And if you think of it, you might introduce some of the other people around you and let the folks at home know who they are. Right. All right, right. two minutes, everybody. I gotta go up in the booth now. Good luck. Two minutes. Here's your copy, Ted. Ah, uh, wait a minute. What's this Dateline Ethiopia doing here? <laughs> I couldn't help it, Ted. There was an earthquake there. Is that King Guy's name in here? Yes, it is. Well, then a heck with it. <laughs> Ted, that's our opener. We've got a minute of film Don't on that. Don't worry about it, Murr. I'll wing it. You think you're so darn terrific, don't you? Everybody who loves you, well, you're looking at one guy who doesn't. I'm picking that up in here, Wes. Five seconds. Four, three, <laughs> two, one. Cue Ted. Hi, Ted Baxter here, six o'clock news. If our set looks a little different tonight, it's because we're trying something a little different tonight. We thought we'd bring you our show right from the newsroom to bring you the excitement of the news as it happens. <laughs> I'd like you to meet some of the people behind the scenes. This is our associate producer, Mary Richards. Best legs in local TV. <laughs> you can't see them now, you'll have to take my word for it. <laughs> oh, here's Wes Callison, one of our new guys. But as you can see, he's already made some good friends here, if you get what I mean. <laughs> right, Wes? <laughs> uh, look, Wes, why don't you go back to your desk and work on that story we were discussing earlier, okay? <laughs> Sit down. 
<laughs> and over here is Murray Slaughter, our ace news writer. You want to wave to the folks, Murray? <laughs> over here is our producer, Lou Grant. You want to come out and say hi to the folks, Lou? <laughs> no. Come on out, you big lug. Don't be bashful. <laughs> I'd rather not. I'm not going away till you say hi. <laughs> Well, that's our staff. <clears throat> and now the headlines. A major earthquake. Mary, could I talk somewhere. to you just for a minute? Consumer prices rise again by a Trouble record high. Like we're talking about the news, okay? Later. Teacher's bill passed by city council. The president announces new plans to fight inflation. 500 firefighters halt a brush fire in Humboldt National Park. Uh, <clears throat> that's the phone. Could be a, a hot news story coming in from one of our on the scene WGM reporters. You want to answer that, Mary, so we can listen in? Newsroom? Hi, Mary. <laughs> now back to the news. Dateline, Washington. Consumer prices rose again last month by an almost record high of nine tenths of one percent. The latest index adds up to more bad news. <laughs> Baxter. I've just been handed this bulletin by Murray Slaughter. Thanks, Murray. <laughs> That's the way we do things around here. Bulletins right off the wire. Murray brings them to me so you get the news when we get the news. And now the light is on. <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, <clears throat> that state line, Jakarta. That's... Dateline Jakarta. American Vice Consul Robert Dillingham was released unharmed by Indonesian terrorists who kidnapped him four days ago. Oh, that's certainly good news, isn't it, gang? Isn't it, gang? Oh, yes. Oh, here's Wes Callison to bring me another bullet. Seriously, folks. Look, I'm sorry. I realize I've made some mistakes, but I want you to know that I still care about you, and I hope we can still be friends. <laughs> We'll be back with more on that story right after this commercial message. We're into commercial, Ted. Hey, I think it's going pretty good so far, don't you? <laughs> so until tomorrow, this is Ted Baxter saying good night and good news. All right, Ted, we're off the air. Hey, Lou, I thought it went pretty terrific, didn't you? No, I didn't, Ted. Yeah, you're right, bombed, didn't it? <laughs> Sorry you bombed, Wes. No, it wasn't your fault, Wes. Thanks, Murray. Wes, listen, I'm I'm sorry, Lou. No, no, that's all right. Nobody can blame you. I like the idea myself. Of course, I would have never liked the idea if you hadn't brought it up. <laughs> anyway, uh, we tried something and it didn't work. Well, no, don't feel bad. I'll probably go back to Chuckles anyway. Oh, fine, fine. Hey, Wes. That was really a lovely note you sent me. No, thank you, Mary. Hey, I got an idea. Why don't you and I go out and have a d dinner? Oh, now, look, I don't want you feeling sorry for me, Mary. I mean, it's not the end of the world. I still have chuckles. I, I just don't want you feeling sorry for Wes, me. Wes, I would really like to have dinner with you. Yeah, but you feel sorry for me. I mean, that's why you're asking me to have dinner, because you feel sorry for me, right? <laughs>